everybody. Happy new week. I hope you're doing amazing. I am super excited to be sitting here next to me with a four time published author, Jazz Rawlinson, who has just recently published her fourth book um, with us. We've been blessed to help her do that. And um, I, I'll share the cover with you. I'm sure Jazz has one there as well. Uh, but this is her latest book that has just been released, The Stories We Carry. Um, and she's based over in Brisbane. So thank you for joining me this morning. Oh, thanks so much for having me here, Nat. Um, I'm excited. And I'll, let me do the official introduction and we'll get <laughs> back into the conversation. So, guys, Jazz Rollinson is an award winning book coach, resilient speaker, and best selling author who empowers female change makers to transform their stories into books that create global impact. Combining her lived experience as a domestic sexual violence survivor with a BA of a degree in creative writing and psychology, Jazz is highly renowned for her ability to transform people's lives from hopelessness to healing through the power of writing. Endorsed by high profile organizations such as America's National Center of Sexual Exploitation, Jazz has impacted hundreds of thousands of lives through global outlets such as Business Insider, ABC, and news.com.au. And is also a proud anti trafficking ambassador who has spent time with survivors and investigators in SE. Southeast Asia. Uh, in 2022, Jazz featured in front of 100 million people via the award-winning TV series Adventure All Stars as part of her mission to end child trafficking. Above all, Jazz believes that everyone has a story with the power to inspire, impact, and change lives. Wow, that's amazing, and I've been so happy to, to get to know you a little bit more. And even though we do similar things, I always believe that there's, there's someone for everybody out there. And what you do is very, very sensitive work in terms of the types of stories that you bring out into the world. So talk to us a little bit. Where did this book writing for you begin? How long ago was the first book? Uh, by the way, guys, I was going to show you, I've got Jazz's um, website open and if you, and we'll tell you where, where to go, but basically she's got a books area where you can check out towards the bottom, the first three books, which are there, <laughs> right there. And you can see her book at the top here, um, the latest book, but we'll tell you a bit more about that later on. So back to our question. <laughs> when did this all start for you, Jazz? Yeah, well, the first book started um, in 2017. So I had done a lot of advocacy work up to that point. And uh, I mean, like, like you said, I did go to university. I, I did get a degree in um, creative writing and psychology, but yes. didn't really know what I wanted to do with that for a long time. And then, yeah, this idea just came to me in 2017 that I really wanted to use the lived experiences I had around, you know, losing a parent to suicide and growing up with family violence and things like that really wanted to use that to help other people. And so I had this idea for my very first book, which was um, to create an anthology series mm -hmm. and to have stories from everyday people, high profile people sharing about what their toughest moments were in life and how they came out the other side. And that formed the, the very first book, which was called Reasons, or which is called Reasons to Live One More Day Every Day. And then the response to that was was so amazing that I decided to do another two so it became this series um so that's where I started before writing my memoir but yeah it was just amazing to be able to put my lived experiences and my expertise as an interviewer and a writer into you know one project with other people and to help them you know similar to what you do as well but on a bit of a different different scale um just working really intimately with people to help them write and tell their stories and then bring them to the world so beautiful and um with this latest book you know how how is the process and how long did it actually take you to write and tell us a little bit about about what people would get out of reading it yeah so my my newest book it's called the stories we carry mm -hmm. and um, I love the cover. I love, you know, you guys did an amazing job helping me with that. So thank you. Um, yeah, it was a it was a different process because for the past four or so years before this one, um, I had always been focused on helping everyone else tell their story, yeah. really, and not really sharing much about my story. We're only sharing little snippets here and there. And then 
when I decided that it was time to tell my story in full and share about my experiences growing up and how I came out the other side of trauma and violence and a lot of things like that. Um, I, I thought that it would probably be difficult, but I wasn't really prepared for how tough it was at times. And it was interesting because, you know, I coach women all the time on how to try and, you know, how to take care of themselves throughout the writing process and um, how to balance vulnerability with self-care. But when it's your own story, it's, you know, you can have that toolkit, but you can't always, you can't just stop things from being hard. So it was a, I, it was a really tough process at times. It was very cathartic as well. It was very healing. There were things that I had completely forgotten about until I went back through half a dozen journals. And that was a big part of writing this book too, because a lot of my experiences that I write about in here happened between the ages of about 15 and 21. And so I couldn't remember some of those very well, or I had different memories of, of them. And it wasn't until I read back through diaries, um, which was really hard to do, that I remembered the way that some things played out and then came to understand other things that I just hadn't even thought about, like a relationship I was in when I was younger and I didn't, I didn't think it was abusive at all. And then when I read back through my diaries, I just went, wow, this was terrible. Like this was actual, this was emotional abuse and I just didn't see it. So the, the book started out as, you know, I thought, oh, this will probably be a really fun and cathartic thing. And yeah. then it turned into, you know, I have to do this. I have to get this book out there to help other, you know, young people and other women or, you know, adults who are trapped in abusive relationships, uh, particularly during the pandemic. Yeah. Um, so that was when like the purpose part really stepped in and I was like, I have to do this. I, I have to get this out there. And it was probably a I, I probably wrote the bulk of it in about four months, which is very fast for a book that's a, a, yeah. almost 100,000 words. Um, and that's probably why it was quite difficult for me at times. But um, yeah, and then and then it had to go through editing and all of that. So it took a bit longer, but it was a pretty fast process compared to a lot of my other previous books. Yeah, I love it. And um, there's someone that's um, asking a question here online. How do you get beyond a family member not wanting you to write about your life involving them and the hard parts to talk about? Mm. Yeah, I talk about this all the time because I always get asked at, you know, master classes or by clients. And yeah. um, one thing I shared recently is that you have to be so rock solid in what your mission is when it comes to telling your story. There are always ways to write sensitively around certain things. You know, if if you're writing about things that have happened at the hands of a family member um, or someone close to you, you know, if you keep the experience to your experience, you know, what did you go through? What did you feel? How did it impact you? Less about focusing on the other person and just write truthfully about what actually happened. Of course, there are things that you have to change to avoid defamation, but when it comes to, yeah, if there's a family member who doesn't want you to talk about certain things, you have to get really, um, you have to have some tough conversations with yourself and say, well, what's my, what's my purpose here? You know, am I writing it for this family member who doesn't support me? Or am I writing this book for hundreds of thousands of women or families or whoever it may be that really need to hear a story like mine? And sometimes that can help you just working out the distinction, like, oh, you're not actually doing this for that family member. Mm. So, and everyone's, of course, everybody's situations are different. So, you know, mm. you've got to navigate it depending on what the individual circumstances are. But yeah, just try to try to come back to the core of why you're doing this, who it is that you want to serve. And then just try to stick to the truth and obviously just change details around the other individuals so that it's not, you know, it's not as obvious who they are and those sorts of things. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. We say the same thing. It's not about pointing fingers or blame yeah. and this kind of stuff. It's about um, telling your perspective. And some of our authors, I mean, we've done hundreds of books with very sensitive topics. 
we encourage them to put even a secondary disclaimer around yes stuff yeah. that may have been changed or that this is only the perspective of the author everyone yeah. can have um, has their own feelings opinions and all that is being respected da, da, da. there's just um yeah there, there, there's ways to go about it and mm. if anything i i well our editors anyway would flag stuff that might be like that. yes and then if it needs to go through a solicitor that needs to check something then um that's also an option and that's really handy you know i say to my clients too because i only handle the writing side of things i don't handle the publishing side of things so i always say yeah. to my clients you know when you do speak with a publisher um or if yeah. you are you know speaking with like natasha ask about this particular thing and, and just flag it and see what they say because they'll often have advice for you and but i interviewed another author the other day about um a book that you know his new book and the defamation sort of things he had to worry about and he said you know in the end he had to choose between making making it really bland and just not talking about the full extent of what he and other male survivors had been through or he had to create characters for these men and the other people in their life and in the end he realized well it's better to tell the truth and allow them to tell the truth even if we have to change their names even though we've changed details around who their abuser was by you know maybe we said that their family their dad was an architect and he wasn't actually an architect or we've mm -hmm. said that they loved surfing and they had brown hair and those things weren't actually true but as long as you truthfully tell the person's experience or your experience yes. that's that's all that matters so what are some tips jazz that you give your clients but also you were you were saying i was trying to do those tools <laughs> use those tools on myself to you know throughout the writing you know there's a lot of emotion um when we because a lot of our books are say business related but then we have those 20 or 30 percent that are the the really hard abuse you know yeah um, yeah all that sort of stuff and we we have we need to do a lot of mindset work with our clients what are some of the tips you've got to share with um that you share with your clients because yours are mostly those personal stories or memoirs that they yeah write. yeah one of the things that's helped me the most and that i always recommend to my clients is using eft tapping I don't know if you use that at all. <laughs> I'm always tapping away at night yeah. time. Um, but that was one of the things that actually helped me come out of the burnout and out of some of the trauma after I finished the book. Um, and so I always recommend that to my clients too. And I have a YouTube playlist that I put together that I share with clients. It's just got some of my top EFT videos I use Ooh. for different things. It might be for writer's block. It might be for feeling that you're enough um feeling that it's okay to speak out how to relax all kinds of things that play into part how does and the the reason that i recommend eft so strongly is because when you have experienced some form of trauma or a really strong form of trauma mm -hmm. like myself your nervous system is often in fight or flight and so the most effective way to calm your nervous system and get it out of fight or flight which will often be activated through the process of remembering things and rewriting them is to do eft um, and there are tons of videos on youtube like so many amazing free ones i have an eft therapist that i do some stuff with every few like every couple of months i'll book in with her um and we did some things you know throughout the writing process and at the end as well to like get that stuff out of my body after i'd finished the book um so i mean there are lots of other tools but that's the main one that i focus on and then um i also recommend you know just writing down on a sticky note what your purpose is for the book you know why are you doing this yeah. putting it on your computer or a mirror or somewhere so that when things do get tough you remember why you're actually doing this yeah and they don't give up and i actually encourage people to write a hundred reasons why yeah it's easy to get to the first five or 10 or 20 but when you can yeah. stretch it out to a hundred like and you don't have to do it all at once but you know that why is then even even stronger you know yeah what a great idea yeah mm. so take that one <laughs> that is one of your tasks to your people because um 
I said, it's really easy to get to the first 20, but after 20, you know, yeah. you just journal about it. And whenever it comes up, add it onto the list, add it onto the list. And then it's like, there's no way you're not going to follow yeah. through. Let exactly. me have a look at here. Um, a one more question uh, online. How do you keep from getting overwhelmed when thinking about all the things you want to include or address? Yes. Um, you yeah, know, there is a process that I use and I use with my clients, but um, one of the things that probably helps the most is, you know, so like all of us, you know, we write down all of the stories that we think we're probably going to include and then it can get really overwhelming. Um, so one thing that I do is that, first of all, I group the the memories into four different parts or three different parts, like a, you know, childhood, adolescence and early adult. Um, and then, you know, the catalyst moment and where I am now. And then I look at, you know, how many stories are in each part. And so that way, if, if I am getting overwhelmed by stories and I've got a million stories in part two, not much in the others, I'm like, okay, well, I, I need to take some out. And the other question I ask myself is, well, what is actually essential for the reader to know and what ties in with the purpose of the book? Um, and I was talking about this with a client the other day because she was like, she mentioned that she also, you know, one of her lived experience, um, one of her lived experiences is that she's a mother to, you know, a child that's on the spectrum. And so we were talking about, you know, her experience of raising um, neurodiverse children and things like that. And she said, but I just don't know what, like which stories to include. And I said, well, that particular story, does that fit within the grand purpose that we have for the book of, what the theme is and she was like oh no not really so yeah. I said you know it's it's another story and it's a great story to be able to share but it's not essential to the book because it doesn't drive the th it doesn't drive the theme or the purpose of the book forward it's just another story yeah. so just highlight I just say just highlight the key ones that you know fit in with the purpose of the book and all the other ones that you're overwhelmed by just leave them for now and then at the end if you think they one of them's super important and you can slot it in somewhere then come back to it amazing and also i know other people i don't do this but i know a lot of people who are sticky <laughs> like posted notes mm. all over the world arranging the different stories and things like that oh yeah, yeah. i have seen that too yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't do that i think i'm more <laughs> linear in terms of like you know telling yeah. in an orderly fashion and, and some people do the mind maps and all that kind of stuff so whatever works for you I would say um, yes do it but these are some really good um, tips so what would people get from reading your memoir like what do you think um, yeah so that well? like also what I was talking about before with the purpose of the book so you know with the stories we carry it is all about teaching people how to rewrite shame into strength um, which is kind of my tagline yeah. and because the biggest thing that I believe is that trauma doesn't have to be a life sentence. And I've heard experts, you know, in mental health fields say that trauma is a life sentence. And I get really angry when I hear that because I don't believe it at all. Um, sure, there are still things that affect me from my lived experiences. I mean, most people who have been through these kinds of things especially when it comes to, you know, sexual violence and things like that. Of course, there are going to be things that your body holds on to and that your mind remembers but for the most part I live pretty free from those traumas they don't you know it's not part of my every day and so yeah my message is really just to show other people that you can come through the other side of these things you can create a life of, of fulfillment and joy and even if you do still struggle with your mental health or things that come up it it does that's okay but it doesn't mean that number one you're a victim and things are always going to be this way or always going to be this tough and number two it doesn't mean that you can't still have a, a really big fulfilling life um and the other thing that was really important to me too with the book is that it's not just my story in the back there is a resource section and that's where i've got not just your list of you know lifeline and all those call centers and resources like that but also grassroots organizations that i've done work with or that I've supported or come across in the last five years or so um, that can be a really great support network for people whether it's for mental health whether it's for um, 
post-separation custody abuse and things like that. There are lots of different grassroots organisations in there to support people. And it was really important for me to put that in there as well as, you know, I've got tools and tips for thriving after trauma and also a section on how to share your story safely, because that's a big one for a lot of trauma survivors as well that do want to start using their story or speaking up. Yeah. So it's, yeah, it's more than, it's, it's mostly memoir, but it's also part, I guess, personal development as well at the end. Um, so if you like personal development and you like memoir, then you'll love the stories you carry because it's got a bit of both. I love that. Yeah. I love when books have this, the story story, but then the practical application for someone. Yeah. You want to be able to help people go away with something, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I always want to get them to do something for themselves. It's nice to read stories, but it's like, how can we put this into action to make yeah. it move forward either in a personal sense or, you know, business sense and all that sort of stuff. I love that. Very cool. So um, tell me about the process now. Let's go through publishing and, um, you know, you've been through the process four times. Yes, um, yes. How was it working with us, you know, when you consider you know, other companies, because I, as I said to you before, we even went live this morning, you know, I've had experiences with three or four other yeah. companies and, um, you know, what did you like? What did you, you know, um, how did you find it? Bottom line. Yeah. Oh, it was, I have to say it was much better process this time around working with your team. Um, you know, and we talked before, like we're not here to bad mouth anyone, but I do think it's important to be able to share with people, you know, some of the things that can really make it a more spectacular, you know, result or a more easy process and some of the things to look out for. And yeah, I just, I had some issues um, previously. So I had decided to try a different, um, a different publishing company this time around. And yeah, so I mean, you would know I had a super short time frame for my book. Yeah. So I really appreciated your team working with me on that. Um, I think I brought you the manuscript in September and I really needed the book to be at least available for pre-order in December and yeah. hopefully have printed copies by then, which I did actually receive in time, which was amazing because that's a very short process. Um, but yeah, the process for me was really just bringing it to you guys and saying, um, this is my super short time frame so can we get cracking on the cover first yes. I think we did actually start that back in July or something like that because yes, um, covers always take forever because you know it takes a while to get to what you want yes. and yeah so doing that and then um, going through yeah I really like actually one thing I really liked that I hadn't seen previously was that your team has a font catalog which anyone that's watching will will know this if they've published through you and that was something that was actually really um, a frustrating thing with who I was with previously was that I felt like I had to do a lot of the legwork myself. So I had to trawl through, like look up paragraph dividers and try and find what they looked like online and then send examples and go, can you do something like this maybe? And I didn't realize that there are publishing companies that have like a font catalog. So I don't have to do all the work. I just have to look through and choose something. Yeah. So that was cool. Um, and yeah. then I that think was Vivi's creation, the sample. Guide. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Yeah. And the other thing that was super helpful was just um, how promptly like your team responds. And so when I had a question, like, and this is one reason why I, I switched publishers too, was that I didn't want to be waiting like two weeks for a response. Um, sometimes I'd understand if it was like 48 hours for something, but two weeks, I was not happy with that. So, um, yeah, it was great to have that you guys have got a team and that you're able to like respond to people's queries quickly. And that really helped me with the process of getting it, um, getting, getting the it <laughs> done, getting it done and getting it out there into the world, creating impact. That was amazing. And I've already thing. seen you like on many interviews on, in magazines, <clears throat> was it women's day or was it which um one? i did who magazine last yeah. year and then they featured me again in january yeah. and then i had like did a feature with news.com.au the other week and Maria yeah. mail and abc and Maybe. yeah lots of different ones like that i love that i love that i always like i, I watched your 
you know, pre-launch journey and all that yeah. that happens. And, um, you know, we do similar things at, um, at the stages of the, depending on when the book is out. So what's your goal for this year? What's the big goal with the book? Oh. Um, well, I'm actually doing more speaking this year and I'm doing workshops. So yeah. I'm using the book um, to help with that as well and help with that process. Because a lot of organisations who've read my book then are like, oh, we're really interested in getting you in to run, excuse okay. me, run a writing workshop for our survivors that we serve here and things like that. So looking to do more speaking. Um, I'd love to do a documentary at some stage. Um, I did do a mini documentary many years ago, but that was before I started my business. So sort of, I don't promote it much because it's kind of like my pre journey. So I'd really like to do another documentary. I don't know how that will come into effect but <laughs> that would be great to do yeah I love how passionate you are about your mission and your story and I'll often see your posts on social media and the stuff you share and you really stand behind what you believe and what you see the, the truth and you really um I guess support people who need supporting as well so that's really lovely um, thank you and um yeah the woman on the mission so <laughs> yeah so, well let's tell people where they can buy the book um i'm going to share your website um and yeah so people can get it directly from jazzrollinson.com slash the stories we carry yeah the name um at the end yeah jazzrollinson.com slash the stories we carry is and you can also pick up the other books from that same link as well um I'll spell it out for those that might be listening to this as a podcast later on. So it's yeah. J-A-S is jazz and then Rollinson, R-A-W-L-I-N-S-O-N and just .com. And then obviously you can check out Jazz's full website, but there's a book stab there. Um, yeah. And if you just go straight to slash the stories we carry, yeah. it will just take you direct to like a landing page for the books. So it's yeah. just like a really easy way to grab grab the book directly and you can yeah. grab the others if you want to as well. Yeah. And if you scroll down, you'll get to the other books and um, yeah, get that whole set. So, um, so, and I'm sure Jazz will sign it for you and all that. Yeah, I always say to people, if you order through my site, just put a note in the notes section if you want it signed, and then I'm happy to do that. So, yeah. I always say if you get it from directly from the author, you'll get yeah. a more special experience than just getting it off Amazon and all. Yeah, that. exactly. The book is available. Um, it is available everywhere else as well so yeah, but you can look it up but the stories we carry by jazz rollins and so thank you so much jazz for your time this morning um uh, keep helping you know there needs to be more people like us out there empowering those because the journeys of writing your story and sensitive topics such as these they do <laughs> provide such amazing healing and growth of um self-worth and self-love when someone's done it for themselves i think it's um it's a wonderful journey mm -hmm. for people to give themselves permission to go on yeah definitely and thanks for your time and your support as well absolutely it's been it's been wonderful and i just love seeing it and you're so unique with your blue and <laughs> purple hair so no one can miss you <laughs> yeah that's right i love it all right guys well have a wonderful week hope you've enjoyed that interview and go support jazz or pass on her details to anyone that yeah. might benefit from that have a great week and as i always like to say is smash it out bye Thank you.